Thank you, President Officer. Can I start by recognising the significant announcement Hamza Yusuf made this week that he was resigning as First Minister? While he and I have significant political disagreements, I think it's important to take a moment to thank him for his public service, which has included 12 years as a minister, and I wish him and his family the very best for the future. But for me and Scottish Labour, this has never been about one person. It is also not just about the past 17 years of SNP failure, but even more significantly, it is about the present and the future. Now more than ever, our country needs credible and effective leadership and stable and competent government to take on the twin crises facing our nation, an economic crisis and an NHS crisis. And I have no confidence in the SNP's ability to deliver that, and that is why I am bringing this motion to Parliament today. And this motion of no confidence in this SNP government is based on two principal arguments. First, it is now clear that the SNP as a political party are so chaotic, divided and dysfunctional that it can't deliver competent government and is failing Scots every single day. And I don't believe that changes if they purely change the face at the top. Let's look at the two candidates being suggested, Kate Forbes and John Swinney. There are already SNP ministers briefing journalists that if Kate Forbes was to become leader, they would actively look to stop her being able to form a government, and that would mean even more chaos. And John Swinney, the man who has been at the heart of the SNP government for the last 17 years, the heart of the SNP leadership for the last 40 years, the finance secretary that broke the public finances, and the worst education secretary in the history of the Scottish Parliament. Hardly the competence or the change our country needs. And second, it is about the democratic deficit. It would be untenable for the SNP to impose yet another unelected First Minister on our country, especially in these circumstances. Let's and let me Sarwar. remind the Chamber what Nicola Sturgeon said when Rishi Sunak replaced Liz Truss as Prime Minister. She said we couldn't have a revolving door at Downing Street, that the office of Prime Minister was not the plaything of one political party, and that there would be a democratic outrage if it didn't go to an election and for the people to decide. If that's the principle the SNP rightly apply to Westminster and the UK, why do they now hold Scotland and this Parliament to a lower standard? Yeah, yeah. Now, I know SNP members will point to Vaughan Gething as First Minister in Wales or other examples, but it's important to recognise the difference. Leaders stating that they would not complete full terms or leaving due to deeply personal circumstances and having a managed and orderly transition is very different from two leaders leaving in controversy and chaos. Because for the second time in as many years, we have scandal, incompetence and political self-interest with the SNP putting party before country and imposing their choice on the people of Scotland. Because it should be for the people to decide who leads our country, not a backroom deal, not a stage-managed coronation or a small group of SNP members. And, Presiding Officer, I think the similarities now between the UK Conservative Government and the SNP Scottish Government are now so clear to see. Two political parties, both chaotic, divided, dysfunctional, unleadable, ungovernable, incompetent, distracted by internal wars, distant from the people's priorities and unable to fix the mess of their own making. Both looking to pitch community against community, both entrenched in the politics of division and both unable to meet the ambitions, hopes and aspirations of the people. That's why our country is crying out for change. Yes, they want rid of this rotten Tory government across the UK, but they also want to move on from this dysfunctional and SM incompetent SNP government here in Scotland. That's why we need an election so the people can decide. And it's getting clearer and clearer by the day that only Labour can deliver the change Scotland needs. And I can hear, 
and I can hear from SNP members that they don't agree, but it's because it's them that have stopped listening to the Scottish people. The people struggling in a cost of living crisis who need a government on their side, focused on jobs and lowering bills. The people languishing on NHS waiting lists who need a government that will renew and reform our NHS. The people stuck in temporary accommodation with record levels of homelessness who need a government focused on building new homes. The people who worry about their children's future who need a government to raise education standards and bring opportunities to every community. The people who can see the huge potential of Scotland being squandered by two incompetent governments and who need a government that actually believes in economic growth and is willing to work with business. It is now clearer than it's ever been that it's time for the people of Scotland to have their say. It's time to elect a government capable of delivering on the ambitions and hopes of every person in our great country. And that's why, Presiding Officer, I have no confidence in this SNP government. I have no confidence that they can deliver the stability and competence we need. That's why it's time for change, and I move the motion in my name.